I'm Ryan. And I'm Steven. This is 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing podcast. Did you introduce yourself as Steven? Um, oh, you no, said I said Steve, Steve and. and this is 60 Cycle Hum. <laughs> like an idiot, I don't have the first ad loaded. Oh, well, this we first this ad is every week. from uh, Tyler Estes. This is a Squire uh, S73 2002 Candy Apple Red on Reverb. It says, this is a Fender Squire designed after the Guild S100 guitar. The guitar is very clean. Candy Apple Red, two Duncan design pickups. Sound amazing. Stop tailpiece. The neck is straight and the action is low. Plays great, but I'm get selling to get money for a jazz master of some kind. Fancy block inlays. Great guitar for the money. Comes with tweed hard shell case. Thanks for looking. Let me know if you have questions or trades. This headstock shape is almost identical to the Firefly headstock shape. Weird. I mean, it's a pretty generic like. Yeah, it's just like a, a round curve at the top. But it is, it's just funny. Also, is that the same shape as the Guild headstock? I don't think so. I mean, th didn't Fender also own Diarmond? Yes. And they did similar things liquidating Diarmond and Guild stock by rebranding it as Squire. Right. For a this couple is definitely years. not the Guild headstock. I don't no. know what I was thinking. Yeah. So um, I think there is a Diarmond M73 that's also this shape. Uh huh. Uh, because yeah, uh, the Diarmond one is a little different though. Is it? Yeah, I thought so. I, th I mean, I think it might have been. I think the Diarmond one might have been a m more close replica of the Guild one, in terms of. So the Guild um, has like this bridge cover thing going on. I feel like the Diarmond yeah, yeah. may have had that. Well, the the Diarmond had that uh, that diagonal stop tail piece. Right. That's what I'm. That's what it's. That's what it's called. It's a tail yeah. piece. The tail piece. Apparently, these are... Oh, the Guild. Yeah, the Guild S100 is currently in production. Yeah, maybe uh, it is pretty close to the Diarmond one. I Like I said, I know there were a bunch of guitars that were like sold as Diarmond for a while, and then it's like they stopped selling it them as It has the Diarmond. same... Uh, cutaway? Cutaway up there. Um, and then they sold like... So they did some hollow bodies under Diarmond, yeah, and then yeah. I think some of those got repatched to Squire. Yeah, and... they were just really rebadging everything and moving out the door. Yeah. And like, we got this. We want to do Squire stuff. We don't want to do Guild and Diarmond. These are we... these guitars are, like, pretty popular. Not, I don't know about the Squire ones, but, like, the Guild S100s have, like, a soft spot. I don't know if this is a $375 They don't take, have a soft though. spot. People have a soft spot for them. If they have a, had a soft spot in the guitar, that would be a design defect. <sighs> <laughs> We're not using the Roadcaster tonight. We could have done the little oh, yeah. sad trombone yeah. sound effect. Um, I mean, I only see one of these, and it's in black on on uh, Reverb eBay. Oh, a bay, a bay, and that one was listed for like three, is it three seventy five also? Well, um, on the on the thread where this was posted, uh, Nate Goshi Goshi posted his personal Squire. Oh, cool! Uh, guild thing here that he's got like this heavy, uh, like buffed off finish yeah, thing going on yeah. with camo pickups. I didn't see those. I still haven't seen them. <sighs> Get it? Get the joke about camouflage. It's just like when people make. Actually, at least I understand this joke. Like when people, uh, he's also got rainbow strings on it. Oh dang! He's cool. gone full personalized with this thing, yeah. but he seems to like it enough to make all these modifications and make it his own. So these must be cool guitars. Yeah, but the you know they're cool, but are they three hundred and seven? I mean, I guess is that what Korean. people are asking for them now? Because remember when they were doing no, these? No, well, this person is asking three seventy five. When they were doing these, they were they were clearing them out. They yeah. were clearing out the DRM and stuff too, yep. pretty hard, and the Guild stuff. It was like. Someone, please take these guilds, take these diarments. And I remember people, uh, back when that was happening, this must have been a decade or so ago. Yeah, it was uh, a while. People were plucking up the diarments just to gut the pickups out of them because they weren't like a like a good version of a diarment guitar in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Like some people love them. I'm not I'm not trashing on your guys' guitars that you love, but you know, compared to what a diarment could be, they weren't amazing. But they were putting the DRM in pickups in them. So people were grabbing these cheap guitars and, and pulling the pickups out to put them in other stuff. 
Because the D-Armies had kind of their own unique pickup thing happening on, happening you know what? On. These aren't rebadged D Armins because the D Armin S65 was a bolt on neck. Interesting. But it did have like the correct hardware with that. Uh, they cr- just started gluing them in. They wanted to save screws and metal plates. Who knows? Maybe the Squire one was first and then they bought D Armin. There's a freaking Vin. Oh, no, that's a T. It had to be coming down the same assembly line. They just decided to glue them. Yeah. There's also a D Armin S67, seven string version. Oh, my gosh. Uh yeah, I, I remember know, the seven string Dano, the Dan Electro seven string from yeah. that time period, like that early two thousands time when like seven strings were starting to become a thing, but no one was really quite sure what they were gonna be yet. Like oh, these kids want seven strings, and like a Dan Electro seven string, like totally didn't fit with the bands that were playing seven string at the time. You know, it was total nonsense. Oh, here's I a Diarmin. So the Diarmin S sixty five is a bolt on. But the Diarmin S73, which this is the Squire S73, ah, was a, uh, as a was set a neck. Set neck. We've solved the mystery. Mystery solved, Steve. <laughs> so what do you think is a fair price for one of these? I don't know, man. It seems like people are you know, shooting for 375? 300 seems, plus all over the place. It's like me. I'm not seeing people sell it for that price, but... Uh, there's also just a very, very small. I mean, place. you got it. Would you? I mean, for that money, you could get yourself a pretty dang decent Epiphone. You're getting into right. th- close to the territory where you can pick up a used Gibson SG. You're, you're right that this gets you into the decent Epiphone territory. But what is Squire if not Fender's personal Epiphone? Right, but like if you want that, it's like the same thing as like the guitar from last week, where it's like a Fender gone. Uh, LP special, right. like if you want this look, wouldn't you prefer the Gibson? I don't know that people. I think this is different. I think this is different than because this is an SG shape gone squire, right? But I think the by whole... way of Guild or Dearmond. <laughs> Well, and and so what I'm saying is I think basically the argument that you're making is like, why does ESP exist when ESP is just slight? Why would you pay $1,000 for an ESP when you could just get a Gibson? But ESP is different because it's How is it different? It's not one, like, it's not one of the big two that determined like the iconic shape of those guitars. Like any other, like, like it's weird when a Fender brand does a Gibson shape. It's weird when a Gibson brand does a Fender shape. It's not weird when uh, any brand that exists in the tertiary, uh, like, classification does a Fender or Gibson shape. I think that's I what you think, expect is for every other brand to dip their toe into Gibson and Fender shape. I still shapes. think this is different because this is a Fender brand doing a shape from a tertiary brand that was doing their own spin on Gibson. So it's not just like Fender taking right. on Gibson. Well, it's by it's way of Fender purchasing a brand and then saying, hey, we, right, could, right. we could revive this design as, as a squire. I just think so like what, there are people who like right. really are It's the into... equivalent of Gibson owning Kramer that does super strats. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. What this is for is this is for like the kid... Who, you know, the 17 year old kid who is super into Soundgarden and wants a Guild S100 just like Kim Thale, but doesn't have the coin for it. You know, a lot of stuff, Steve. I just read the Wikipedia article like 30 seconds ago. (laughs) Trivia master over here with his Wikipedia. Yeah. I'm going to start a new podcast where all I do is read Wikipedia articles word for word. Well, if you like do some ASMR mixed in, it'd probably take off. Like ASMR Wikipedia. Hey guys, today on 60 Cycle Hop, we're going to read a Wikipedia article from Fender. This is really stupid. <laughs> All right, uh, what's new, Ryan? <laughs> what's new? Uh, I sold an amp today. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Tell us more. I sold the very first tube amp I ever owned. I bought a, a a PV Classic 50, must have been 20 years ago now, something like that, 15, 20 years, and uh, I sold it today. Wow. 
I listed it on OfferUp, which is a, plazy, a crazy place to do business, by the way. Yeah. Uh, You've been really pushing OfferUp. Are we? Are you pocketing OfferUp money without no, me knowing? No, it's the only thing I've been able to move things through lately. Well, I've been doing pedals through Reverb, but it's right. like I moved a guitar through OfferUp. I've moved an amp through OfferUp now. Craigslist seems to be dead mm -hmm. for the most part. Um, but yeah, uh, I was looking at this amp. It used to sit right behind you here. And I have not had a real use for it since our band broke up. Yeah. Your favorite band? Because you weren't getting loud. Not only was it not were you getting still using, were you, were you using that amp in the morning class? Maybe. I mean, you didn't really need it, but... I don't think so. I might have... No, I didn't have the Princeton by then. I think I was using that crate thing that I had because it was lighter. Remember that crate V18 or whatever it was? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was using that guy because it wasn't. Yeah, it did break. Well, I sold it and then it broke. Yeah, yeah. I gave, I sold it, half gave it to a kid. Like I gave him a real good deal, and then it broke like a month later, and I felt bad, but I also felt good because it didn't break while I owned it. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do, kid? <laughs> but anyways, yeah, I just never use it. It makes a sound that I don't use live when I'm loud. I go completely clean when I'm loud now for the surf mm -hmm. band. It's a pain in the ass to move around because it's so heavy. It's not good for doing demos because it makes uh, fan noise at right. low volumes. And it just doesn't sound good at low volumes. Like that amp sounds like a billion bucks when you dime the clean channel. Right. And it just saturates and it gets tubey and crispy. You just said a billion. Is that because of inflation? Because the expression traditionally was it sounds like a million bucks. It's but. a billion. But it sound it, that thing sounded amazing loud. I'm just never going to get it loud like that again. It's just sitting here doing nothing for a decade now. I know it's I've been it's out of here now. We have so much room so for much activities. Room, so much room for activities now. Uh I felt kind of sad watching it go out the door, but then I also felt like I was scamming the guy a little bit cuz I got 250 out of him and that thing was pretty trashed. Like cosmetically that thing might as well have been at the bottom of the ocean for a while. Like I sweated and spilled I feel like countless a lot beers of... all over that thing. And just like it just bounced around in the trunk of my car. Yeah. Like permanently for a couple of years. Cause I was like, I'm not going to take this inside. I don't, it's too heavy. I'm just going to keep it in my car between gigs and practices. Uh, at one point I had to, I paid to have the output transformer replaced. Right. Remember that? Cause it, yeah. So you went and shot on me. You basically, basically, ah, I don't know if you, I recovered the money that I spent fixing it by selling it. Right. So I was going to say you probably came out even to a head when you when you factor in like the longevity and like with how much the extended the no. pay, the payouts of, you know, gigs and whatever from that thing. With the amount of abuse and the amount of use I gave that amp, I feel like I fully got my money's worth out of it. Yeah. Like I think about that thing used for 375. Something like that? Not bad. It wasn't bad, and it was in pretty dang new condition when I got it. I definitely put all the wear on that yeah. amp. Um, you you mentioned like the rust and whatever and the grime on the top, yeah. and it's it's really interesting to me because it's not just the PVs, uh, but also like all of the Fender hot rod stuff. I feel like I see that chrome on panel. Craigslist. The top that chrome panel where all the knobs are it just seems like it always just. Wears I guess I don't away. have anything with a chrome panel right now, do yeah, I? Yeah, and it's like, yeah, I don't really see that as much with like the black face stuff. It, yeah, well, it's, it's the like, paint on there. It's just, it's the chrome because I guess because it's chrome. Yeah. Also, just like the 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 ink that they use to print on there just disappears. Oh, unless yeah. You're looking yeah. in the right light. Uh, so, yeah, sad to see it go, but it's been a long time coming. I wish I sold it a decade ago. I wish I hadn't have fixed it. I wish I had, when it broke, just, just sold it then sold it as a functioning cab and been like, do what you want with the amp right. part of it and gotten my 50 bucks out of it or whatever. Um, because I really haven't used it much after having it repaired. My thought was I was going to have it repaired and eventually have a band that was going to use it. And it just never and came then to that fruition. Never happened. You never did any yeah. of those things. And it's like, you gave up, Ryan. It's not like I don't have amps. I've got amps guys. Oh, I turned that the wrong way. Yeah. Steve's adjusting his mic now instead of doing it before we press record. Well, I'm, yeah. Try, trying to sit up a little straighter. Now so in, back in other new stuff, yeah, I don't know if you've noticed, but oh yeah, we got we've this. got a new table here. 
We got this living in the lap of luxury big with a piece of wood. We've got a big old piece of wood between us. Uh, this is a Husky brand table. I spotted this at Home Depot and I was like, that would be the perfect podcasting table and like demo table because I've been using this little tiny thing for my demo table. Yeah. And we've been using a big plastic folding picnic table for the podcast table. You're going to show them the cool trick? Well, I can crank this thing here. It goes real slow, but. I can raise this to basically a standing position. So if I wanted to have the table be real high, I could. But I'm going to put it back down for now. <laughs> <laughs> but if I want to do demos where I'm standing, yeah, then it's going to make that a lot easier. Um, like I can, the, the little table I usually demo on, like if I'm working on a guitar, the neck is hanging off the end and I'm worried it's going to mm. fall off. I can work on a full guitar on this table. Yeah. It's on wheels so I can move it around and move it around the garage. It just makes sense. So You can keep rolling, 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 uh, rolling. Quick plug, we paid for this with Inner Circle money. So if you ever want to support the show, it goes into cool things like tables. Support us on Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't a cheap table. I wouldn't have bought this table... If like we weren't making, if we weren't having any if we money coming, make in. it work. Yeah, yeah, because it was like three hundred bucks or something Dang, after, sh after, dude. Shi after shipping. I wasn't gonna pick it up. I don't have a car big enough to pick up the box for this thing. Really? No, I'd have you to take, put the seats down. I'd have to take all the baby seats out of my wife's car. Yeah, just smash them. Just smash. No, dude. Like you can see the box over there. It's humongous. Yeah, you're right. I don't know if that would fit in and any of my cars empty. It, this thing is a heavy son of a bitch. Did you have to assemble? I did. That's why that box is so big. Yeah. Well, it would have been bigger if I didn't have to assemble. I don't understand why that box is so wide. Is it just padding? Yeah, there's a lot of padding in there. All right. But still, this, we're all looking up, at a box off camera. Steve, pick up this table later. You'll see how heavy it is. It is a beast of a table. Do you have anything new? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I didn't bring it with me, but I put together my PT Junior board. Oh, finally. Um, I did post some pictures on uh, on the Instagram when I was doing that maybe like a week ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's actually like three weeks ago now. Uh, but I got to say, man, that chalked DC7, I, the one that was sent to us um, came with uh, the grip from them. And so what the like grip is, is... No, it's not. It's uh it's oh, I know like a mean. metal bracket. Yeah, yeah. So the Chalks power supply has two screws in the front uh -huh. of the power supply and you mount the grip to that and then the the width of the bracket is like the exact width of the front bar on like a pedal train board. So you put that on there and then it comes with two new two more screws that you put through there to lock it into place. Okay. And that thing is like rock solid, super cool because I've always just velcroed power supplies to the bottom of boards or like zip ties or whatever. Right? I have the 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 box style, the wooden box style pedal board. I just let my power supplies flop around in there. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and like the, people do different things, or people buy like the pedal train, the mounting brackets that pedal train sells for like Voodoo Labs and whatever. Mm -hmm. But now it's like you're permanent like you're putting holes in your board right with this thing i can pretty much like i have it in the center that's where i that's where i wanted it but it would be really easy for me to take it off and like if i wanted if i wanted to put like an always on pedal on one side of my board i could like dismount my pedal pedal uh power supply slide it over two inches and then i have like more room for like an always on pedal that would be underneath if for some reason i wanted to do that i should do that i should put a boost under my board an underboard boost Anyway, so I got that thing put together. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I also found that, uh, and I don't know if this is a fluke, but I moved some stuff around on my baseboard. So I have a volume pedal on my baseboard now. Mm -hmm. And um, I switched my power supplies on that just from a one spot to the godlike power all, which is also like a cheap one spot type, like just super like 1.7 amp wall wart situation. And the next time I used my board, it was dead quiet. And so now I'm like, is it because I changed pedals around? Though I went from two pedals to four pedals and got quieter. But I still have like, I actually have more digital pedals now, I think. It's very Weird. strange. So I don't know if like the one spot I had was just noisy or if God, the godlike stuff is just really quiet. The godlike one I've I used for a super long time. The only reason I started using the one spot is because the actual cable is super long. Uh huh. And I was like, well, I could take advantage of that. But now that in in the new building that uh, my church has, I'm closer to a power uh, yeah. a power 
wall. What the hell is that called? A power hole. A power hole. He's oh, close to a power a hole. hole a church. Power. Yeah. Um, the hole where the power comes out. Yeah. The the power faucet. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. The power spigot. Um, so now that I'm closer to the power spigot, I don't need as long of a line uh, to get the pa- the power water from the power spigot to my to my board. Right. So I, just, I mean, they I always say that. That, elec- that electricity moves like water. Yeah. It so, just flows. It just flows. So you get your electricity out of that power spigot. Yeah. So I guess that's my what's new. And at some point, I will bring the board here to like show because Someday. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I just feel really dumb for like not bringing it today but that's all right yep yeah i should probably mention that uh grab that thing that you brought uh uh, i'm as of this episode publishing i'm in germany right now and uh there's gonna be an auction to raise money for an animal shelter that henning uh is associated with and how is this auction gonna work uh i think they're gonna put it all on ebay is that gonna happen while you're there I think so. So is this going to be sold before you leave? I don't think so, because eBay listings are like five days or something, right? Yeah. So this should still be up there. This is the last black 50-50, probably of this style, let's of this be, run. Let's be honest. It's number 116. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to take this pedal there, and you're going to be like, here's my pedal. And Henning's going to be like, oh, let me, like, yeah, let me get some pictures of it to put on eBay. He's gonna be taking. He didn't do Henning's voice right. I, I'm not. Uh, let, let me let me take some pictures to put on eBay. Why is this like weird Mary Poppins voice? Whatever. I don't know why you Let's went so it. British with it. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Deutschland forever. <laughs> I'm gonna put this on eBay, and then I'm just gonna hide it. And just no, exactly. It, and that, I'm gonna keep it. That's exactly. He's gonna like plug it in while he's like taking pictures. Like, oh, Ryan, yeah, this is gonna be so great on eBay. Oh, oh yeah, list it all. Oh. Oh, then he's just gonna put like, I don't know what happened. eBay canceled it. I guess I have to keep it now. But if you're uh, if you really want one of these things, that'll be your opportunity to buy it. Uh, that a, video. That auction. video was great. <laughs> You liked that, huh? That was pretty, pretty good. <laughs> All right. Uh, sponsors? Yeah, this week's first sponsor is Sweetwater. Yeah. Dot com. Yeah, we're pretty excited uh, to be sponsored by Sweetwater, who's now officially a Guinness World Records title holder. Uh, I watched all of their videos on that. The old world's largest pedal board. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, first I watched Rob Scallion's video. Right. Which was like that's 35 the- minutes long. Yeah. And then I saw the three videos from Sweetwater, which were politely much shorter. <laughs> well, one of them is like still 20 minutes long. The, oh, round, the round table, table one table? is like 20 minutes well, long. Well, their overview of the thing was like eight minutes long. Right. And then like uh, there was another one that was Yeah, the short. other one was Rob Scal- Scallon saying, Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, you can win a part of this pedal board. Just go to Sweetwater.com. I think it's Sweetwater.com slash giveaway. Anyway, uh, we're, so we're really excited to, to see that stuff. That was yeah. a really cool thing they did with Rob. Um, but more than that is that August is guitar month at Sweetwater. So they have a ton of sales going Finally, on. They've got guitars um, in Sweetwater. Yeah, they have. Don't you mean September is guitar month? I don't know what day it is. It's you're right. It's September. Today is August 30th. No, Steve. Today is... is two weeks from August 30th. <laughs> Man, I don't we are know. podcast professionals over here. The point is September is Guitar Month at Sweetwater. They've got guitars. You can buy them from Sweetwater now. Yeah, so just head over to Sweetwater.com. They have stuff on sale all month. They're going to have Fender uh, Elite Series guitars that are uh, $200 off on all models of the Elite Series while supplies last. What? That's the only one of their list that has a, a while supplies last note. So yeah, that, better get on it. Um, but they also are giving are giving away free backpacks with the Line 6 Helix and Helix LT. They're going to have a ton of other stuff on sale. Just head over to sweetwater.com. Um, I've already been getting like some preview notices. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so just while you're there, like just throw your email on the list. Yeah, and we're going to have links down there. below. Click those links because there are affiliate links and we get a little cut in the action. If you click those affiliate links, no big deal. Uh, but... <laughs> Do I know how to generate? I need to figure out how to generate. I'll generate those. some links for all you. Right, all right. 
Uh, yeah, go check out. Thank Sweetwater for helping out the show and sponsoring the content that you like. Who's our next next sponsor? In our this next spot, sponsor Steve? is Chase Bliss Audio. They make pedals more creative than you are. That's one hundred percent true. I don't uh, think it's, I'm more creative than a single Chase Bliss pedal. Even if they made a little pedal that was a, just a tap tempo, it'd be smarter than me. I tried to be more creative than a Chase Bliss pedal once, and then I broke my ankle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was trying to out creative Chase Bliss by doing like parkour in the shower. <laughs> Slips. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thank uh, goodness it was only your ankle. They've got a reverb, they've got delays, they've got chorus, vibrato. Oh, they that's got delays the for days. They got a tremolo. They got a tremolo. Drive? They've got the drive in the brothers. They've got the condor. The condor is a drive as well. And it's a boost, and an EQ, and a wah. They're super great guys. They make really great, high quality pedals. Uh, go again, head on over to chaseblissaudio.com and t- to see their full lineup. Mm-hmm. Just do it. Just do it Nike. already. Come on. Yeah. All right. So, uh, topic? Yeah, let's do this thing. I didn't read any of the articles about this, so I'm coming in this Uh-oh. blind. I thought this was going to be an article. This is just a this picture a of an article. an article. Sites restrictions on musical instruments could be coming to an end. There's a big conversation now. So, uh, just as backdrop, Sites is... Uh, it's been going for like a couple of years now, right? Center for the Information on Trees, the Environment, and Stuff. Did you make that all up just now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure Sites is a treaty, right? We we're going we're to learn about this in real time. should have... Uh, Hard-hitting the- information. Sites is a multi... Lateral, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna in Florida, also known as the Washington Convention. It's a multilateral treaty. Anyway, so where this comes in for us is that uh, rosewood, specifically I think Brazilian, is it Brazilian rosewood, is um, an endangered species. Maybe all rosewood is now endangered species. Either way, um, rose- we are well read on this yes, subject. Rosewood became, uh, fell under this where basically if you wanted to sell a guitar or if you were like even a player and you were like oh i'm gonna go play a gig in london yeah like i'm gonna take my band on european tour like your instruments were uh subject to these regulations where you had to declare to like the u.s customs that you were transporting an endangered species or whatever it was like a super big deal if i'm gonna transport an endangered species it's gonna be an owl (laughs) Okay, I don't want it to be my guitar. I'm going to bring an owl around with me, okay? No big deal. So or a manatee. I'm going to take a manatee on the plane. Um, so anyway, there's a big thing because originally it came into, like, everything. Um, came, it's been so hard to get rosewood toothpicks. But I'm just, like, uh, but, over it. Um, about four days ago, I mean... Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Uh, the site actually, uh, the Sites Convention has now officially adopted the musical instruments exemption. So basically, what they did is they made it where the rosewood that's part of a musical instrument would be the fretboard, um, which Usually. is typically a fretboard or sometimes like a body s- body wood on an acoustic I've instrument. I've seen them on necks. Um, I've seen rosewood. Necks. Yeah, I mean they have a lot of, of, of a lot of different things. Um, now it says trade in raw material rosewood would still remain regulated, but the stuff that's already, I guess, part of a musical instrument. Oh, okay. Um, we're learning this in real time here. You, you've said that like four times. <laughs> I know. Um, so anyway, this is, uh, this is a thing that actually was seen as like a big blow to the music industry. They, according to this article, the musical instruments industry lost tens of millions of dollars in sales and traveling orchestras feared their instruments would be seized at international borders. Oh Yeah. That's but, rough for like a violin or a cello yeah. or something like that, because that's a hu- that's not that's different than your, you know, six hundred dollar Mexican Strat or whatever. That's a huge investment to lose. Yeah. So uh, the exemption will allow finished musical instruments as well as parts and accessories containing rosewood to be transported freely around the world without permits. So I get the question. I guess would still be like if you're buying uh, fretboard blanks and stuff, that would probably still fall under sites still, still fall under sites but anything that's already built like i guess like the initial running joke when this all went through was like what's going to happen like you think some furniture company in like another country is going to be like i'm going to get around sites by buying 200 fender necks and then pulling the rosewood off of them gotta get that skunk stripe like whatever right <laughs> 
like and then like <laughs> smash it all together to make a piece of furniture or whatever that would be super expensive to do it'd my, be insane the a the scenario that just popped into my head is like what if rosewood was so desirable and so rare and so impossible to get on new guitars that people were buying you know, like older Epiphones and Squires and even Mexican Fenders and whatnot that have a rosewood fretboard on it, delaminating the fretboard oh from the neck gosh. and then repurposing it onto new necks, like going through all that trouble. But honestly, like with rosewood missing from the scene, I haven't missed it. Not once have I been at Nam or any of these things and been like, oh, this is Palfaro. Oh, this is Baked Maple. Yeah. Oh, oh, I wish it well, was rosewood. This is rich light. Like yeah. Like I freaking every time I pick up a baked maple neck, I'm like, oh hell yeah! I want everything in my life to be made out of this. Yeah. So like, I mean, I guess there's probably people out there who super care about getting rosewood again. If you're in the baked maple condom industry, Ryan is your guy. <laughs> he wants everything baked maple. <laughs> there's probably a way to convert baked Stop. maple into some kind of. Just, latex like material there's gotta be right if you slice it thin enough it'll bend you can bend into any shape it's just like a wooden box like <laughs> slide over my wanger <laughs> wow <laughs> this, this is it finally <laughs> so yeah so i think this is like really good a, a really cool thing that this has happened hooray good job world yay no, what's interesting is, you know, a lot of people are saying, like, we should be moving away from Rosewood in general anyway, which at least from what I'm seeing, like, this companies will still be moving away from Rosewood. Yeah. Because this is only a, a lifting the restriction on finish, finished products. So I wonder if I, my, my Mexican strats can be more valuable with a Rosewood neck on it. I don't think so. Hmm. Because I don't think people are complaining about the Palfero. Like, I think there might be a certain generation or a certain, like, group of, like, People who are like, can't get that snap without Rosewood, man. It's got that tone. Nothing else has it. No, Rosewood doesn't have that snap because Rosewood is darker, so it makes a darker sound. Maple is lighter, so it makes a brighter sound. I mean, that's true, but like people say, I don't know. I've heard people say weird things about Rosewood. Maple's got that snap. Rosewood has that that creamy, smooth sound to it because it's darker. Okay. I Andrew up did something else you were saying. Nope. I'm sorry. It's, it's gone it now. It's You're gone. never going to remember that. All right. This next ad was sent by Justin Daniel Asporma. Daniel Asporma. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this is a trailer trash pedal board with flight case Justin Bieber. Here's a trailer trash pedal board with killer ATA flight, flight case that was used on the Justin Bieber purpose tour. It has some cables already pre-wired for in-out and send return or whatever you'd want to use them for. Power cables already run for any power supply you would like to install. It says five hundred dollars. Now, Steve. Yes. You're a believer. Um, is this is this a tour that you care about? Is this one of the good ones? The purpose tour was the one that there was like I don't know if it's his most recent tour, but that was the one when people were saying like, oh, it's called the purpose tour because he's been going to church. Oh. And so like this is like his spiritual awakening tour, whatever, whatever. Because now he he's has got a that purpose. purpose driven he's life. got that purpose driven life. He's he's the tour was forty days long. He had so, four. There was forty days of purpose. <laughs> did, uh, so, do you think this is peak Bieber for you, or this is like on the on the downhill? I don't know. I, you know, ha, I don't, is, has peak has Bieber started to go downhill, or is he still climbing that? We peak? are post. I think we live in a post Bieber society. I don't know if he will. <laughs> if we still did titles, that would be it. Now, honestly, at this point. We're in a post Bieber society. At this point, with like people above the age of of thirty, I wonder if Shane Bieber is more popular than Justin Bieber. Who's Shane Bieber? He's a pitcher for the Cleveland Indians, oh. I think. Well, what do you think is the the minimum age where people are still aware of Bieber? Because I don't think teens care about him anymore, right? I think the teens that care about him are. No, I don't think teen. I don't know that. I think that which is a big which is a big jump because when he came out, it wasn't the teens; it was the tweens. It was like he was hitting that early Hanson crowd, where it was like kids loved him. So yeah, so I so think to, to him to be out of that teen demographic is big. He's really aged out now. I would say like it's not that he's aged out. I would say that I think 
Um, the problem is that the original tween crowd is now all probably in their like early they're college. It, they're now. all in like their mid twenties, probably. Yeah. Because he came out when he was twelve, so he came out like. Oh man, now I got this stupid thing open. He came out ten years ago. Yeah. So yeah, so everyone who was twelve ten years ago is now twenty two. Right? Yeah, well, yeah. Okay, yeah, so they're 22. The number is up here. Steve is pointing at it. Yeah. Um, so I think there might be, like, some teens who have who are, like, current teens who have, like, older siblings. So they got stuck in it longer. Okay. But, like, the current crop of 12-year-olds does not care about Justin Bieber. No. Justin Bieber, for, like, the last few years, he hasn't had a single since 2015. When was the last time he had a double? Oh, JK. I think I scrolled too far. When's Steve. the last time he had a double? I That's don't terrible. <laughs> I don't know what it is. is that a poop joke that I made? I don't even know what my no, joke I'm not sure means. Either. And actually, he had a, du- a single this year. Oh, there we go. 2019. I'm with not Ed Sheeran. Steve. I'm not going to ask you if you would buy this pedal board. I'm going to tell you to buy this. To pedal buy board? this. Pedal board. What am I going to do with a $500 trailer trash? board with an ata case. i think if, if you were in a scenario where you needed a pedal board in an ata case in a, in a real road case i'd be like you have to get this like you have to have the bieber board your faith is just too strong excuse me i your u- believer faith i used to uh post pictures of justin this is what this is all about is i used to post pictures of justin bieber all the time he's gonna try to explain on like away. instagram and facebook because i would just this was probably this was probably actual peak bieber which back was when like we were, 2012, yeah. 2013. Um, back when we were twi- back when we were 12 year olds. Um, back when we were in our mid 20s, and Steve like, was a strong believer. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd like go to like Sears or whatever, and there'd be like a Justin Bieber poster, or I'd like just go to random places and it'd be like, oh, Justin Bieber this, Justin Bieber that. Like, I'd be like, geez, I cannot escape this dude. Everywhere I go. And so one year, actually, one of my sisters bought me a, the Justin Bieber cologne. Uh-huh. But I don't even think... Actually, I don't even think it was cologne. I think it was actually perfume for women. But it was like his scent, but it was for women. I, his whatever. scent for women? What's that called? Perfume? That's a <laughs> creepy thing to do with a... Like, a creepy way to market not, a 12-year-old. Not his scent. It says musk. It says pre... Oh, my god, <laughs> Puberty you need, musk. You need to stop. Um, <laughs> they were selling. Yeah, no, this was probably like pre-puberty. This was probably like adult female pedophile. 2013, 2014. So yeah, he's probably like 16, 17 years right, old. Right. At this time, and that's still creepy if you're an adult woman buying teenage male musk. Yeah, that dude's only 25 right now. As we speak, he is 25 years old. I feel like if you're if you're a pop star and you lose your teen audience by the time you're 25, you've done something wrong. Well, the thing is, is he's kind of just stopped making music. Right. Like he's kind of just, he's, he, he probably looked at all his, all his money and was like, I don't, I'll never spend all this. I just chill out now. That's so it's what like I would most do. of the, most of the coverage on him for like, I would say for the last couple of years, like, I guess he's dropped like a couple collabs with people that have been like uh-huh. really big. Um, like he just, again, like he just had a song this year with Ed Sheeran. I want to say this. Um, anytime he wants to come on the show, he's more than yeah, welcome. Yeah, Justin, let us know. Bring your bring a pedal case with you. We'll yeah. check it out. I mean, he does play guitar. Like he's like he's known for as a multi. He's actually a multi instrumentalist. I believe it. So I have no um, doubt that he's a talented man. Yeah, he just makes music that sucks. <laughs> I don't even know if he makes music that sucks. I've never given him the time of days. Well, maybe you should. Sorry, you, I haven't given you a chance. It's all he's. There's a lot of hooks. I like hooks. Uh, and uh, you probably, his voice is a little nasal, so that's a strike against. It's got a nasal voice. I'm fine with a nasal voice every now and then. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I think he's mostly, like, he hasn't really been making his own stuff. I think he's kind of, like, doing that weird, he's doing that Justin Timberlake thing, but he's still, like, in... The media, he's just sure. not making music. Still, I Why think are we talking about I this? think this is the board for you, Steve. I'm tired of this. Just topic. so you can have the clout to be like, Yeah, I've got Justin Bieber's yeah, board. Whatever. No big well, I don't think it's his. Well, it's from his band. It's like someone in his band. It was on stage with Justin. That's true. It was on stage. With the JB. Or at least like it was on in it was in the arena with Justin Bieber. Who knows if his band was actually Next on time stage someone's with him. talking about Joe Bonamassa, I'm like the only JB I care about. 
is the Biebs. I mean, the only JB I care about is Joe Branton. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, Topic? No, this next sponsor is... uh, before we get to the next topic, is wrist grips. Wrist grips. Did you wrist bring them this time? Dash grips. No, I brought them last time. I forgot them this time. Uh, wrist grips. We have are, their lovely logo up here. Yeah, they are a um, environmental health and safety product. Uh, they help you keep from help you, breaking your wrists off yeah, when you're playing guitar. Basically, they're they're a uh, support for your wrist to help with repetitive stress injuries that can occur with playing guitar, bass, mm-hmm. drums. Uh, probably piano, I would imagine. Any kind of stringed instrument where you're, or any kind of instrument where you're doing a lot of wrist movements. So um, I've been using them at home for practice. I've been actually using them for uh, any time I'm practicing. And they actually do, I think, really help. They help, they definitely like keep my wrist warm. I feel like there's more blood flow, which is one of the things like they're supposed to improve circulation. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to help keep your wrist straight, which actually helps uh, with keep your form better overall. So, so you play I'm, better. I'm really happy with them. Stop playing like a really sloppy, healthy, really. sloppy teenager. That's right. That's right. With your they're, with your wrist wrapped around. They're not for the you. Or you're hanging around your ankles. They're not for you if you want to play punk rock low. I will say that it makes it makes you hold your hand in the correct position. Helps your blood flow. It helps avoid uh, that long trip down the carpet tunnel. Wrist grips. The carpet tunnel. Yeah, that's all right. Anyway, go check them out at uh, wrist grips.com and use code 60 cycle 15 for 15% off your purchase. Just go check them out. You yeah. got to try them. They're re- especially, like I said, if you have like anything where like you practice guitar for like 15, 30 minutes and you start feeling like your arms are really tired, then this is definitely like the yeah. product for you. Anglers, too much in the wrist. You're trying to lock up your wrist when you're casting. Wrist grips. I guess. Did you not get my carpal tunnel joke? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Carpool tunnel. Carpet tunnel. Must be this taller ride. <laughs> Carpool tunnel. <laughs> uh, this episode is also brought to you by Diderio. Uh, this week we're talking about the dual lock strap lock. Picture here. Um, the dual lock strap lock is a little pair of clips that clip on. They're like four bucks. They're super cool. They're like the same price as what you would pay for like those rubber washers if you're buying those brand name yeah. rubber washers. Yeah. The difference is, is they've got a little hook in them to slide your cable into. They're going to let your cable slide around freely. Also, you don't have to jam your cable in between your strap and your and your body and risk your strap popping off because it's locked in and your cable's not even there. It's pretty freaking genius. Also, if you use those rubber washers, people are going to think you're an alcoholic. They're going to think those, those, those beer washers in there. Get the real deal. Get the thing that can you tuck your cable in. Get the Diderio uh, cable clip strap thing. The dual lock. Dual it's lock. Called the dual lock, Ryan. The, we've this only, is a sponsor. We've only been doing the sponsorship for nine months now. Jeez. The dual lock. All right. This next topic was sent by Josh Marmon. He says, talk about a heavy mod. I don't. Oh, that's a Variax. That's actually really he cool. Wasn't, idea. He wasn't asking us to talk about this. I just screen grabbed his post about this one no, man I band. No, I know. And I thought it would be fun to talk about what instruments we would include in our own one man band rigs. Like if you were going to go out, walk around Balboa Park, be a one man band, what instruments would you want? Jeez. Everyone does harmonica. I feel like I would want flute. It's harmonica cold. is like pretty like. Recorder. It's cliche. Need a recorder. Yeah, they sell over the shoulder harmonica holders. Like you're not getting creative when you do the harmonica. Like you gotta do like you said, Here's a my flute, thought. A recorder? recorder. Okay, if you do recorder and bagpipe. Then six string bass instead of a guitar, bear or maybe you like a bass six? Oh, bass six could be good too. Cause what I'm thinking is like I could one hand like I can one hand tap a bass a lot better than I can one hand tap a guitar. Uh huh. So that's what I'm thinking. Six string bass, so I can still get high notes if I want them. But you're right, bass six. Yep, yep. Uh, and then I can use my other hand to play the recorder. I can be like, oh, so you're gonna tap and you're gonna play the recorder. And I over here, I'm like, boom, 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 and I'm over here, I'm like, boom, 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 boom. Recorder's two handed though. You gotta. Close off some of the valves with all yeah, your... Yeah, I'm going to close off... Oh, yeah. Maybe you permanently close off some of those valves. Make and you, it a half recorder. With, like, hot glue, and you or just know, like... Tape. This is the scale that I have to work yeah, with here. I've got go. these this handful of notes here that I can one-hand with a recorder. Um, I think I'm doing uh, either wrist or ankle or both jingle bells. Yeah. 
Um, that's my percussion section. Maybe it's egg and sock. You ever do the old egg and sock trick? I've tried to do the egg and the sock. I don't have good enough rhythm to keep it going, but it's, that's a good, that's a good trick. The egg and the sock. I always wanted to do like the, the accordion between the knees. Like you have an accordion between your knees, but then you're like, you've got to set that to like a drone key or something like yeah. that for it to work. But you're, you're walking, you're like, you can have two different notes from that. Right. So you're holding down like this rhythm section with your knee accordion. Mm-hmm. And then I would have like these extra long sandal shoes with thumb pianos on the end of each. And sandal then I'd play th- with thumb. Yeah, I had like these long sandals that extend out the front of my feet, like, yeah, like yeah. fins with, with thumb pa- pianos in front. That you can play with your toes. I would play with my toes. That's gross. I didn't say this was going to be sanitary or not gross. Um, <sighs> You're disgusting. You disgust me, sir. I would do the, instead of the harmonica. I would do a jaw harp. I'd be, I'd like a system where one thing is holding it to my mouth and another thing like triggered by my elbow is like flicking it. So I'm walking around like doring, 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 right. doring, or didgeridoo. You don't need any hands to play a didgeridoo. That's true. Hang That's a true. big old didgeridoo out the front of my mouth attached to like something holding it in front of me. Walk around, play acoustic guitar and didgeridoo at the same time. Harmonica knees, I mean, accordion knees, thumb piano toes, which I'll just be ripping, mm-hmm. by the way. Like, I'm going to play, like, complicated stuff on those thumb pianos with my toes. And then, I mean, I like this guy's style with a big old bass drum on the back. I feel like there's got to be room for that. you got to have the big old bass drum. This guy has an interesting system. We could just talk about this guy's system. He's got a cable tied to the headstock of his guitar. Yeah, that's connected to a, like a drumstick with yeah. like a snare drum. So he's he's controlling like a snare drum and I think a hi hat, or maybe yeah. the hi hat is connected. So there's something going down to his feet. He might be controlling oh, the bass drum like with bass his feet. Drum. But he's got this multi cable pulley system thing going on here just to control the drums. I don't want to focus too much on the drums. I think like one bass drum is good enough for me. Right. And maybe like some rattle. Mm. rattly things attached to me somehow. Do you have anything else to add to, to this riveting conversation? I feel like there's like some really obvious like ways, like things to do creatively. Oh, 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 you could put a kazoo in your butthole. <laughs> when you fart, it makes a kazoo noise. Was that what you were trying to think of, Steve? No. Are you sure? At all. You sure? Not at all. I mean, the way this is going, I'm surprised you didn't just surprise, suggest using putting a slide whistle up your butthole where the slide is also connected to your dick. And so all you have to do is get an erection at the same time that you're farting to make the thing go. Boop. I'm going to respond. No, it actually, would only go. Boop. No, responding to the concept of farting while simultaneously getting an erection. I'm all in, baby. <laughs> Sign me up. I'm ready to make that music. It's going to be the fastest slide whistle in the West. <laughs> like that is when you hear in, in, in movies and TV shows and cartoons or whatever, like someone is excited and they use a slide whistle right. to indicate that. That is exactly what's happening. Oh, my gosh. A slide whistle. I mean, you're not wrong. Shoved inside someone's butthole. They are farting, and the slide is connected via a pulley and cable system uh, to a penis that is becoming erect. Jeez. And when it goes, you know what's happening. It's over. It's over. (laughs) And you're farting at the same time. (laughs) Farting at the same time as losing an erection. Well, it's because you just probably easier. It's because you got so excited while getting it that that's all that you have. Like you fart and you're like, oh, there goes my erection. Well, no, it's more like so it's like you fart and that gets you an erection, but then like it only lasts for a couple seconds and then you basically you get that secondary fart at the same time that you're losing it. <laughs> Old people can't actually use this instrument. Because of Viagra, it lasts for four hours. Right, right. Well, they can use it. It's just got to be a really long song. <laughs> also, they're all worn out back there. It's hard to hold the kazoo in or the slide whistle. Wow. 
Yikes. It just keeps rattling out. I'm going to do housekeeping, but I'm kind of wishing I wasn't. Huge uh, thanks to our sponsors for making this content yeah, possible. Uh, thanks to our patrons for supporting us. Uh, our new patrons for this episode uh, at the $1 level is Stephen Reynolds. Uh, $1 level, you support the show, which is super awesome at the $1 level. This is costing you $0.25 cents per week. You purchased twenty cents per week in a five week three hundredth of this table yeah. for us, uh, and also thanks to um, Nick Harshaw who's supporting us at the inner circle level, uh, which is ten dollars. And at the inner circle level, you get some merch someday. You get camaraderie. And, uh, you get into the inner circle, which is our super secret group of super secret people. Uh, you know, it's something. It's not I, really that secret. We talk about yeah, it a lot. Something I want to mention about that group: if you ever wanted to be a moderator in our big Facebook group. That is the path to entry right there. Once you've been in the inner circle for a while, if you <laughs> want it, just let us know. Or we might mention it one day like, hey, who wants to be a moderator? And we'll just make you a moderator. If you're in there, we're going to trust you. If you've been in there for a while, you're invested in the show. That's just how it works. Yep. So if you're heavily involved in the group and you ever wanted to just be drunk with power, that's one way to get there. Yeah. All right. This last ad. Oh, it's uh, patreon.com slash 60 cycle hum. Uh, this last ad was sent by Robert Israel. Uh, this is a 100th anniversary limited edition Gibson Les Paul Supreme 2015 Custom USA asking $6,750. This guy does the right thing. He's giving you free shipping with this guitar. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing that's really going to seal the deal with this ad. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Is that guitar in the toilet? Yeah, this ta- this episode ta- is all toilet humor. Ta- talk about uh talk about uh, a crappy situation. Oh my gosh! All right, this week's music was. Sent we don't want by- to talk about this at That's all. all I, actually, uh, all I uh, want to say is th- this ad is crappy, and I just wanted to leave it at that. This is the most insane used ad I've ever seen. The, the most insane photo, and I looked at the other. I looked at the ad. And I found the other photos. Yeah. They're not this. They're normal photos in the rest of the ad. This person is balancing this nearly $7,000 guitar in a toilet, hovering over the water. It's resting on the seat. Yeah. If you're listening to the audio of the podcast and you haven't checked in on the links yet to see the yeah, pictures. Yeah, look at the link. Go look at the link. Look at the image. All right, Im- tell Im- us about link. the song, Steve. Uh, this week's song was sent by Alex, or sorry, Alec Maximowicz. Uh, he says, hey, guys, saw on Facebook and you had songs. This is one of the songs off my band's 2018 album. Uh, the band is called Pat's Run. The album is called Fisherman at Sea. And the song is called Put on a Record. It's primarily recorded with a Fender 52 Telecaster reissue and a 90s custom shop ESP Vintage Plus Strat copy. Those are like really nice guitars, those ESP yeah. uh, Vintage Plus models. The main pedals used were Julia Chorus and the 385 Overdrive, both from Walrus Audio into a Vox AC-15. He says, hope to make it on the show. Well, here you are you making it. it on the show. Making the crappiest episode the we've worst, done in a while. The filthiest, raunchiest episode we've ever done. I mean, I, I don't mean, this think is, it was really, I don't think it was any of those things. We've we've worked our way into our Howard Stern season of life with this one. Oh, just farts and dicks and poop and toilet humor. That's what we're all, all about All right, bye. Now. Bye, everybody. Stay grounded.
remember you in black and white With your arms wrapped around me so tight I'll put it in a frame, I'll hang it on my wall Never forget Brian Street in the And what you never had Fingers through her hair Yearning for the times When we both would just stare From across the room I remember you And I hope that you would see me too So whisper please And ask for her and Never leave yourself sitting wanting more Sing me your song and tell me it's wrong I've got all day Let me remember you in black and white With your arms wrapped around me so tight I'll put it in a frame, I'll hang it on my wall Never forget Brian Street in the Put on blonde, on blonde, one last time